Okay, so usually some of these topics they come from my Discord. You know, I give some people you know their own area, their own channel, and I just you know, and sometimes it just sparks annoyance. But most importantly, it helps me understand the mindset of others. It also helps me understand kind of the things that I should have been saying and I haven't been saying. So, you know, I'm always thankful. Even if it's something negative that pops up, as long as it's not disrespectful, it might tick me off, but I learn more. And if you stop learning, you stop being. It's that simple. So this right here, only you have prevented systemic change. And then why do I say that? Because systemic simply means it's through everything. This action is through everything. So right now there's a pandemic going on. It is reported through Reuters um, that there are people hijacking trucks and stuff like that. And I don't know how true that is or not. You know, someone could easily post something and say it's from something. And But going on the way people act, the way people are, I'm kind of 50-50 on that. Now, here's the thing. In, on the Discord, you know, some you know, person was saying that it's, uh, you know, you're, you're being part of the problem. And I get that. But the whole base of it was the lockdown is lasting too long. And that's where the problem is. For anyone out there that thinks the lockdown is lasting too long, I need you to pause. Think about it, okay? Don't pause the video. Just pause yourself. You're thinking. Just calm. Chill. All right? And just hear me out on this. The entire point of the quote-unquote lockdown is to make sure that the lockdown is brief. That was the point. I want you to think about it. If, if the politicians of this country, USA, just to be clear, if the politicians of this country had chose to warn and lock it down instead of selling off shares for profit and calling it a hoax or just not saying anything at all, which enables the citation of a hoax, Where would we be right now? Just think about it. This would have been in January before, before the virus was here that we know of. It would have been maybe all of January, all of February, figuring things out. Mid to early March, we would have been done. There would have been self-quarantine, no one in and out. Everyone would have to have their place, stock up on what you can, and live. Just survive for that amount of time. That's all that would have had to have been done. So March, we would have been out. Okay, March. At, it, just a two and a half month lockdown, or maybe two months, that would have been fine. All businesses shut down, travels and whatnot shut down, stay inside, keep yourself clean, do all that other stuff, probably not even a mask needed at the time. It would have been great, but that's not what we got. It was a hoopla, misconstrued information, lies, mendacity. Now, where are we now? We are at the point where people, and I want y'all to hear this, People are going outside in protest of the lockdown with signs and chants of not wanting to be trapped in their homes. They are outside saying they want their freedom. They are protesting a lockdown while exercising not being locked down at all. I want you to think about that level of intelligence. I mean, that's, you lost at sea, 
Send me some help, God. There's a log. You pass it by. Send me some help. There's a raft. Not good enough. Pass it by. And then there's a small boat. But you pass it by maybe because the motor don't work. Then you drown. Then you say, why did you not help me? Like I said, you three things. What the hell you want? And then you're like, ah, crap. That's what's happening. Stay inside. That's number one. Make sure you keep your hands clean. All right? Number two. Disinfect surfaces and whatnot. Those three things. That's all that would have had to been done. This stuff is systemic. Why? Because what's happened now. All right, how far am I into this? Six minutes. What's happened now? Now it's gotten to the point people need bailout money. I want you to hear this. Obama was supposed to bail us out. He didn't. He bailed out Wall Street, the banks. Oh, yeah, he gave us a little chicken feed, and we, we pecked at the ground, and we were happy. That wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. So there's a stimulus package that should have happened at some point. That didn't happen. Banks got that. So let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. Now we're at a pandemic. So what do we need? We need a bailout money. So everyone was supposed to get about $1,200. That's if, if they qualify for that $1,200. All right? You keep, keep that in mind. If they qualify. However, no one had to qualify up there at Wall Street and these banks for the, for at first, at first, the three plus trillion dollars that they got. They didn't have to. They just got it. There was there's no regulation on it, no return on receipt, nothing. Nothing. It's not taxed, it's, it's nothing. That twelve hundred dollars that we're supposed to get, what happened? The banks was like, Well, you're in debt because of this, we're gonna soak that up. We're gonna take it from you. That's your for-profit banks for you. It's systemic. Big Oil, they profit $60 billion a year, but for some reason, they needed a piece of that three, three plus trillion dollars. All the while, the whole argument for Bernie's campaign was, how are you going to afford Medicare for All and free college? Where are you going to get the money? No one asked that when it's going to bail out Wall Street and whatnot. Now, when Wall Street and all them bailed out for those trillions, how have your lives improved? It's systemic. And then you have time go by, not even a month. There's a, we need more, right? So you got Democrats saying, hey, oh, wait, you don't have Democrats saying anything. It's systemic. What you have are the pro more the more progressive ones, you know, Omar, Talib, Rokana, you know, you've got them, and they're saying you need two thousand dollars a month minimum until the pandemic is over. Nancy Pelosi and everybody else says no. They say no. However, Wall Street and the banks got, they got four plus trillion dollars. It's systemic. See, everyone that's already mega wealthy, they have to keep their way of life going. So they get these big bailouts. They get these handouts. And where do you think that money's coming from? That's the Fed. That's everything that they have been saving up from all the people that's been working, those people who've been laid off, furloughed, fired, and all that, that's the tax money from that. It's systemic. We are forced to pay taxes. We have to. 
You work, you pay tax. You start up a new business, you pay tax. It don't matter what you do, you pay tax. Why? Because your tax money is supposed to go for what? Infrastructure. It's supposed to go for paying off, well, not paying off, but paying the salaries of these politicians so that they can live comfortable while they also work on legislation and whatnot, running the country, supposedly. All right? So you tell me something. Your tax money is supposed to supplement them and their lives while they're at work. Why are they getting paid extra from these big donors and mega donors? They're getting paid twice over. You have not seen a pay increase in over two decades. Minimum wage goes up at best subtly, at incremental five cents every few, maybe 10 or 20 years. But they always give themselves a pay increase with your money, with your tax money. It's systemic. That's what it is. Phone vibrating. So, I'll check it later. Um, so that's systemic. It's in there. There's another bailout that's going to them now. They've already gotten over seven trillion plus dollars in this bailout. You were supposed to get one thousand two hundred to last you ten weeks. For some people, that's that's mortgage. For some, that's rent. For some, that's half the rent. Hell, if you live cheap, that's that's mortgage. That's food, household supplies, maybe gas if you need it, and now calling people to come charge a car and to deliver gas. That's where it's coming from. But wait, you didn't get it. Your banks did. And others called it out, so your banks stop it. Name one Democrat that spoke against that. Name one Republican that spoke against that. You're going to be fiscally conservative. Shouldn't you be the one that says, wait, banks, you can't take that money. The people need it. You want to talk about getting the economy going. How is it getting the economy going when you're only going to give a little bit to the people, everything to the wealthy, not really reopen anything. So when people, when, the econ when, the, when they open things up, you know what's going to happen? No one's going to have jobs. People are losing jobs left and right. But that's just the cost of business. That's all that is. No one's talking about the record job loss other than social media. They're talking about the job loss, and you've got the, you've got the idiots and the hateful that will blame the Democrats. They're not in charge. Actually, Donald Trump is in charge. He is in charge. I mean, they asked him about him and his rallies, and he said he don't even know about rallies. He don't know what they are. That's the guy you, you trust. Mr. King of rallies. He did damn near a rally a week. If he weren't doing a rally, he was golfing or doing something at Mar-a-Lago. This stuff is systemic. And the partisan voters... They are the ones that make it systemic because you vote in the same people that's doing the very things that's destroying your lives. That's what you're doing. That's what's happening. You want better, but you will not vote for better. They tell you to be against Bernie. They tell you to be against anyone else. And that's what you do. There's no way you are going to get better when you keep voting the same way. If it's blue no matter who, how do you feel when that blue says, we don't care about you? And it's, they don't have to say it. Everybody knows the line, actions speak louder than words. Inaction is just as powerful as action. 
Because when someone takes your job and throws it away and the person that could have blocked it says nothing, that tells you everything. You don't need that person. You don't. Let me tell you something. Food in your home is dwindling not because there's no food on the shelves. It's dwindling because it's almost impossible to go out and get it. And while you're slowly, slowly being, being faced with starvation looming right there at the horizon, you're starting to see it. You know it's coming. Your Democratic Party leader the face of it decides to show off her massive refrigerators and freezers and talk about her great ice cream and this is not long after saying that that you all want stimulus but you're not going to get it this is the one that says she will not give you medicare for all she's the one saying she will not give you free college she's the one saying that she will not use that money to do better infrastructure she has been the one that's been siding with every Republican vote and making sure to make sure every progressive has no voice to the point where she's turned AOC just enough in her direction. Oh, Nancy Pelosi, is she a mama bear? Yes, she is to the DNC. But when you're a progressive, that should not be your mama bear. It should be their mama bear. If I'm correct, she said, I'm not trapped in here with y'all. You all are trapped in here with me. Oh, how things have changed in just a couple of years. How things have changed. You vote these people in, and then they hoodwink you. Fine. Why? Because they tricked you. Fine. But when you keep voting in the same person, to the same seat and they have done nothing for you but everything for themselves that's on you you have enabled and allowed systemic corruption to prevail and if you want to stop it it is up to you to stop it it is up to you to find someone else to vote for it's blue no matter who then Make sure that that who is someone that cares about you. That's what you do. And that's what I'm asking. There are people running, there's someone and some people running against Nancy Pelosi. If you're in her state, look them up. You know, go to gov.org and whatnot and look up who's running against who. It's out there. This is a critical time. We are suffering. You are suffering. But these politicians, these establishment politicians, they're not suffering. They're enjoying life. And they're making sure you support them enjoying a life that you could never have. Change. It's always there. You just have to do it. This has been Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.